This video will go over adding discussions to your course content. Discussions are very useful areas for students to collaborate with one another, to communicate with one another. One great advantage to using discussions even in face-to-face -face courses is that it gets students to speak that wouldn't normally speak up in class. So um, they're really a great tool to use and very widely used in online and hybrid courses and I think uh, have a lot of benefit in a face-to-face -face course as well. So to create a discussion, uh, we're gonna find a module to put it in. We don't have much in this cat food module yet, so we'll have a discussion about cat food. So I'm gonna go to Upload Create, and I'll choose New Discussion. And we'll put in a title, I'll call this the cat food discussion. Now, this is creating a discussion topic. There are actually, there's discussion forums and discussion topics, and this is just a little bit confusing. So discussion forums are basically folders or buckets to hold different topics. So for this particular course, I just have a category called, or a forum, called other course discussions that I put all the discussions in. But if I did want to create a new forum, I could do that here. Again, the forum is just the folder that holds these discussion topics. So I'll say, what is your favorite type of cat food and why? And I have the full editor here, so I can add in videos, images, links, things like that, whatever I want. I can customize, you know, how this text looks, etc. So I'll click on publish. This is going to create that discussion topic for me. Um, I can come down here and add a couple things down here, really a lot of my settings here. I can take care of, um, I can add my dates here, and there's a couple dates here, but there's other dates that I want to show you later in this video. So I can add my dates here, I can add my start date, and my end date, and my due date. These are fine to use. Um, the one thing about using start and end dates on discussions is that, especially when it comes to end dates, after the end date is up on a discussion, students will no longer be able to access it at all. And one of the great things about discussions is because you've got so many students sharing of insights, after a certain day, it's really nice to be able to go back, especially when studying for you know, an exam or something, and, and review those, um, what other students have said. So there are lock and unlock dates, but you can't get to them from this page. So I'm going to show you the lock and unlock dates here in just a minute when we go into Course Admin. A couple other settings down here. You can decide whether you want students to post anonymously. Um, I don't see very many instructors do that. You can choose to approve posts before they actually display in here. Um, again, I don't see a lot of instructors do that either. That seems to be a little bit extra work on the instructor's part. This one I see quite often. Users must start a thread before they can read and reply to other threads. I see this one used a lot because this forces students to post their own thoughts and ideas before they can see anyone else's. So um, this helps encourage that more original thought. You can allow um, ratings as well. You can have students up and down vote each other's posts and also assign stars to each other. Um, I haven't seen that used much here either. So I'll click update for that. We'll set that as the post first mode. I can also add a grade item over here. So um, I'll make this out of 10 points and I'll click on the plus sign. This is very similar to what we've seen other places and I'll call it the cat food discussion. And I'll put in a grade category. I already have a category for discussions and 10 points. So I will save that and save. So we now have our basic settings um, and actually from this page, I can go ahead and start the first thread if I want to, or I can let the students do that. When I do come in here, if there is a thread in here, I can click reply. I'll show you that here in a minute as well. But before I do any of that, let's go into Course Admin. And we'll go in the other way, Course Admin Discussions. This is going to give you a, little, a few more extra settings. So here's the cat food discussion that I just created. And uh, there's another discussion here, and I'll show you that one in a minute because that one already has a post that we can go in and take a look at. So I'm going to go into cat food discussion, and I'm going to click on where it says edit topic. And here I've got a few extra settings. So I've got the forum there, my description, the options. I did that before. Um, you'll note down here that I have the locking options. 
And this is what I was talking about before. By using the lock and unlock dates, um, students can then go in and still view the discussion after the dates are locked, but they're not going to be able to post anymore. So these are really great alternatives to use the unlock and lock dates instead of using the start and end dates for discussions. So to do that, we're just going to select this unlock topic for a specific date range, check the boxes for the start and end date, and I can display these in the calendar as well. All right, a couple other things here. I do have a restrictions tab uh, where I can set release conditions and also group and section restrictions. So when you do create groups, you can actually create group discussions and that will um, set this so that each discussion topic has its own group that so only that group can see that particular discussion topic. The assessment tab then is where you're going to have the grade item. Um, you can add a rubric to the discussion. There's also an option here to allow assessment of individual posts. This um, doesn't sound quite like the way it works. So you have to choose a calculation method and what this will do is if your um, assignment is worth or the, the assignment that's tied to this is worth 10 points, what it will do is it will look at all the posts that students have created and have you assign a score out of 10 for each one of them. So some of post scores, um, if you are going to use that, I would recommend breaking it down. Um, again, a great tool to use if you are grading replies separately from posts, but I'd recommend keeping that in mind that it's going to ask you to put in the score out of 10 there if the whole thing is out of 10. So it's going to ask you to put e each post out of 10. Um, so just you have to do the math in your head and kind of break that down. And then uh, the objectives tab allows you to tie those course competencies and objectives to this, which we don't have set up in this class and is a little bit more of an advanced feature. So I'm going to save and close that. And this is going to take me to that discussion. You'll notice I have the unlock and lock dates on there and I've got the assessment and post first. Well, notice here on my other one that I actually have a new post and I can see that I have a new post here because it shows in bold and I can just click on that number one and we can see what test student has posted and um, posted cat, cat whiskers give them super senses. So I can start a new thread here or I can click on it and I can come in here and click where it says reply to thread and I can say yes nice observation. There's an option here to subscribe as well. If I do that, then I will get a notification whenever a student, a new student posts to that. In general, it's going to show up here, but you can set that as well to uh, send you an email if you, if you want it to.